Have you been fascinated by how neuroscientists can control the neurons of a mouse just through a light switch? Well, they do that in a field called optogenetics. And today, what we're going to understand is how do uh, we're going to understand the first step in these optogenetic experiments, which is often uh, making uh, mouse lines with light sensitive genes. So what we're going to be doing is a knock-in experiment. We're going, we're, we're going to cut a specific portion of a mouse genome and add in our own choice of gene, which is light sensitive. So I think that will be very exciting. And this is just a walkthrough of the whole experiment through the whole steps. But I have written a detailed article on if you're, uh, and this article would be helpful for you if you want to go deeper into why have we selected this particular gene? Why are we designing a single guide RNA instead of a guide RNA? So if you have deeper questions, if you want to understand the fundamentals behind choosing uh, some of these steps, then I think the article would be great for you. It still goes through all the steps, but to help uh, people access uh, the websites and make sense of the g genomic databases. I've also made this walkthrough video. So let's get started. The first step is to find our uh, find the sequence of our gene. So uh, I've chosen GT Rosa 26 in the mouse genome because it's a safe harbor site. So at NCBI, I'll look for nucleotide, type in six and the organism name so mus musculus that's mouse mouse so we want the first uh we want so this is a gene so yes uh others were non they were linear non-coding rna we need the gene so this is what we're going to go with here you can find uh, more detail about. Uh, so this is also this is a detailed version of the non-coding RNA. Um, and so you can find like what are the different names of this, uh, what it is its lineage, and so this gene. So why is this written in gene type as non-coding RNA? Because it produces a long non-coding RNA that is under the control of the constitutive promoter. And even here, it's mentioned that it is widely used for the integration of transgenes, which is why we're using this. If you scroll down, you can see here the location. So it's located in chromosome 6. This is, so GD Rosa 26. This is our gene of interest. Now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to GenBank. So this is where the window opens. And you can find a bunch. So this is showing selected region. So if you really scroll down, you can find the basis of this whole gene. You can find the part where non-coding RNA is formed from. So non-coding RNA is formed from the highlighted basis. And if you want the coding, the start of the coding sequence, then you can. This is the coding sequence. But the gene is quite big, right? And to be more precise, I wanted to add it where uh, genes are usually added in these experiments. So that after research, I found it's uh, the first entron. It's a site within the first entron. So we're going to try to find that. In this, at this stage, you can also use the coding sequence uh, in later steps for benchling to help you uh, know where we want to cut the gene. That also worked. But to be more precise, we're going to use the intron cipher that is usually used. To find the sequence for the first intron, I've come to a database known as Ensemble. And I'm going to choose mouse and GT Rosa. And I'm going to search for GT Rosa 26. I'm going to choose the first option. It is also by Philippe Soriano. And in my NCBI, it was also from the Soriano lab. So that's good. The page we get when uh, we're using 
the website and it can even show me transcripts. So transcripts are, uh, they generate different, they're the different RNAs that are transcripted from that gene, but all of them are non-coding linear RNAs. So we're going to go here for exons. We're choosing one of the transcripts. I can see exon here. And so the exon table also gives me the location of the intron. So as you can see, this is the start sequence and the end sequence. And I can input this, copy this, and input this. Do you know where? In the NCBI. So you, you here you can see the selected region. So it's going to sh it's showing me the selected region of the whole gene, right? But I can uh, by copying that start and end, I can or ask NCBI to only show me the intron sequence, which I can add in my bench link. After adding the sequence uh, for the intron, I can download the GenBank file from here. So it asks me GenBank flight live. So visible range, do that. And once I have my file um, downloaded, I can move on to bench link. So when I'm in bench link, so I have like, logged in so in your project you can see a plus sign here and i'll go for crispr crispr guides because we're making a guide rna so from gene id uh you see uh so gd roster 26 is not available in the benchling database so what you can do is uh add the sequence file the genman file we downloaded but sometimes i found that this upload doesn't really work or it can't read in that case you can also just copy the basis. So if I choose raw basis, I can type and I can copy paste my basis here. So here I go, I copy it and then it uploads the whole thing. Right, so we're going to go with single guide. Our guide length is 20. So 20 basis is how long our single guide RNA is, and uh, it read that it was the right genome. So it's GRCM39, uh, and if you go back to the NCBI, GRCM39. And so PAM, so we're going with PAM, that is NGG, because we're choosing uh, CAS9 uh, for this experiment and you click on finish, then it will upload your project. So this is my uploaded project. Here, you can find the linear map of the whole uh, sequence that you uploaded. Linear map, I'll try to find my site that is XBAI. So when I find, so you can see it's here. So between 3,900 and 4,000. And if I click, so it shows me this section this is the site so what we're trying to we're what we're going to do is we're going to select some regions upstream to this side to make our guide rna i'm going to go here to design and analyze guides and so this these are the same specifications and so my target region that i've selected that is upstream so my site is here you can even like try to expand this to till here maybe and i can create so what benchling does is that it uh, generates all the possible guide sequences uh, within that uh, section so uh here's the guide sequence the, here's the strand of which strand is uh is it is the cast that i'm going to cut and he, here is the on target off target score now the uh like so we both we want both of these scores to be high as said in the article this particular experiment i chose uh an uh rna that was on uh 3700 uh you but how did i choose this like based on both the uh, on target and off target scores. The next step we're going to do is we're going to run a blast sequence to check if our guide RNA is has less uh, as 
lower chances of going in the wrong target. So we want to minimize off target because off target score is the inverse probability of it going to the wrong place. So higher is better for us. So uh, what we want to check through um, the uh, on the blast sequence is if the guide sequence is uh, aligned with the genome we're editing so that it finds the right place. To access BLAST, we go back again to NCBI. Here is BLAST. And uh, let's try to learn to use this. So we're going to choose Nucleotide BLAST. Here you have to add the accession number. So this is the guide RNA sequence. Uh, you can also choose real close file. And the job title are usually the number which, uh, for the RNA you've chosen. So that helps you uh, like understand. So like, okay, which RNA was I running this blast for? Uh, so we want genomic plus transcript databases. And instead of human genomic, you make sure to choose the mouse one. And uh, optimize for Mega blast. So highly similar sequences will be chosen instead of somewhat similar sequences. As shown in the article, this was the window that pops up. So uh, what it does, at least in the at the intron sequence, uh, it gives me the transcript of a predicted uh, muscular skeleton. So it got the organism right, but because that's what we is in our genome database, but uh, it's not the exact right transcript, at least. Uh, so uh, what I've seen happens is that uh, if I choose uh, like from the whole gene, instead of just the intron of GT Rosa 26, uh, the coding sequence, so the CDS that we were able to see at NCBI here, so this, if I target the the sgRNA here, then it relates to higher off-target scores. So that is something you learn as you do experiments. So CDS in GDRDOSA26, from my experiment at least, has shown to be quite an efficient site for uh, knock-in experiments. So the CDS, show, uh, when I did the blast, it showed that it was from uh, GD Rosa 26. It was a transcript from uh, the Soriano lab. Uh, but in both these cases, you get the right chromosome. Uh, that it's like chromosome 6, GRCM39, which is the correct one. So, how we uh, like, you know, kind of analyze whether uh, our sgRNA is efficient or not is that in the blast window so this is a screenshot I've put in the article so if you can see uh, the e values are in this color right and you want a low e value so like even in even uh, like in this the e value is 0 0.032 that's good and uh, what you also want to see is that uh, so it predicted the right genomic sequence chromosome six here and so the e value is 0 0.008 and the next e value is 0 0.49 so that's like a big difference if you really compare and that's good so you know it won't confuse your chromosome with chromosome four right same goes for our, uh transcript so uh, in the right one, it uh, and like in the other one, the coding sequence one uh, that we used uh, from NCBI, it shows GD uh, Rosa 26 from the Philip Soriano lab, and the E value is also very very low. It's like 0 0.008. So this is a screenshot from the coding sequence sgRNA from the whole gene. And so if you really see, it's 100% is aligned. So the sgRNA can go to the genome that it's like targeted at and align with it. So that's good for us. Uh, and so it, right, so the first value it had was 0 0.008. The next one it has is 30. That's huge. So it's, this is very unlikely to happen. So. 
again, experimentation is trial and error to find the right thing. Next thing we're going to do is make our donor template. This is very interesting. Until now, we uh, went through the whole NCBI and Benchling to design our sgRNA. Now we're going to design our donor template plasmid. Uh, so sgRNA is going to cut out the gene, uh, cut the genome, and then what happens after it cuts? So that's where the plasmid comes in. So we add the, our chosen gene through the plasmid, which gets integrated into the mouse genome. To design my plasmid, I used a, a website called Horizon. So in the products, we are going to make a knock-in template. And from this, we're going to make our HDR, our donor designer. And I'm using Oligo because that is single-stranded DNA donor rather than a plasmid because we're not adding a lot of bases. This is the window that comes in. So you type in your organism, your, your gene target. So this is which gene are you actually? Uh, so we have our GT26 here. So it automatically loads in the transcript. And so I'm going to choose the previous one. I label 37001. NGG. So display target region. This is uploaded the genome here. And this is my where the whole cut thing is going to happen. I'm going to unlock this and take one here to that part and here. So what is going to happen is my insertion is going to happen here. My cut is happening here. So that's that's where I want to insert it. I'm going to, so what do we insert in? We insert in the light sensitive gene from uh, Volvox. So that is an algae. The gene uh, that we're adding is known as channel rhodopsin 2, and it actually codes a protein uh, that is goes by the same name, it's a like. Here I have the NCBI uh, um, window for uh, Volvox channel rhodopsin 2 gene. This was kind of hard to find, but I've linked this in my article. So if you're struggling with that, please look there. And so we go to CVS. So there's like a lot of sequences that do code for this protein. I picked the, a shorter one because I was uh, inserting my sequence through an oligo, not a plasmid. So I wasn't able. So I cannot add too many bases. And this is what I've done with the sequence to insert. And this is my homology arm length. So 30 is fine. So homology is like the a period of um, like homology between uh, the plas the donor and your genome. So it kind of matches, it aligns with it, and then it uh, inserts the specific gene sequence through homology director repair. Now let's see our donor, so DNA donor. And this is all in green, so it means that it's good to go. So it will align and add in your gene sequence. You can add to cart from here and order the oligo. And for if you actually want to conduct this in vitro or in, even in vivo. And that's it for learning how to make a single guide RNA and a donor oligo for our gene editing experiment to introduce a light sensitive gene into a mouse. If you want to take this experiment further, you can use transfection methods and electroporation to introduce CRISPR-Cas9 into your target cells. Uh, if, it's in, um, if it's in an organism, you can use uh, viral vectors to make sure they go to the right destination. But uh, this is it for our experiment in silico. 
please do read the whole article to get a better understanding of the whole process. But I hope you had, I hope you got the chance to learn some new things and see you next time.